Welcome again. Let's start where we left off last time. If you remember, this project consists in a very simple flame of gas detector with an alarm. As promised, I moved the circuit to a mini breadboard, one of these little guys. On Amazon, they cost about 1 euro a piece and they are perfect for this project, if you consider to keep this version permanent. As you know, breadboards have sticky tape on their back, so I used this broken portable doorbell as support. I removed some extra plastic here and there to fit the pieces and to let some cables pass. The display and the DHT11 sensor have been glued with super glue. On the other hand, I used 3M tape for the MQ-2 sensor because its back has the circuit exposed, so I thought it was safer using tape instead of glue. Now that you've seen the updated hardware, you'll also see the software, which as usual you'll find in the video description as well. I made some adjustments to the main loop. Instead of using a blocking delay operation, it's more efficient to use a time difference between two loops to determine whether to update and display the sensor data. The gas alarm loop is now much simpler as well. As I announced in the previous video, I also implemented an HTML dashboard and JSON endpoint. The ESP now serves a static HTML dashboard page, now JavaScript, containing the sensor readings. Using the HTML meta refresh tag is the simplest way to automatically update the page every 5 seconds. By using Arduino JSON, it's possible to generate an object which is then served by the slash JSON endpoint. This one contains the same info as the HTML dashboard and any other machine can now read structured data from the board. The current UTC time is just there for reference and it's obtained with the network time protocol during the setup phase. Now, running a web server like this works, but there's a catch. It's plain HTTP, so it's not secure. There are ways to run HTTPS on this board, but they are not as straightforward as you do on a normal computer. Apparently, you could generate a self-signed certificate and store it on the board. But it's a terrible idea. The problem is that the browsers would complain because the certificate has no trust. If there was a less encrypt Arduino library, things would be different. An alternative would be to change the code and use the board as an HTTPS client to send a JSON payload to another server. That server would then need to render the data on a web page. An advantage of this system is that you could log the changes during the course of days, months, years, etc. and put them in a graph or something. This is a matter of a future video. If you liked the video, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching and as always, bye bye.